Welcome to the San Bruno Public Library's Cable Storytime, Once Upon a Time. Today, we'll be reading a lot of books that take place in the West, and we'll meet some cowboys, a sheriff, a very clever orphan, and a whole lot of animals that live in the Southwest. But before we listen to our books, why don't we sing our welcome song? Are you ready? Here we go. We're glad you're here today. We're glad you're here today. Hi ho the Mario, we're glad you're here today. We're glad you're here today. We're glad you're here today. Hi ho the Mario, we're glad you're here today. I am glad that you're here today. Let's listen to our first book. It is called Saving Sweetness by Diane Stanley and G. Brian Karras. Out in the hottest, dustiest part of town is an orphanage run by a female person nasty enough to scare night into day. She goes by the name Mrs. Sump, though I doubt there ever was a Mr. Sump on account of she looks like something the cat drug in and the dog wouldn't eat. I heard that Mrs. Sump doesn't much like seeing the orphans resting or having any fun. So she puts them to scrub in the floor with toothbrushes. Even the ittiest, bittiest, tiniest orphan, little Sweetness. So one day, Sweetness hit the road. I found out right away because Mrs. Sump came busting into Loopy Lil's saloon, hollering like a banshee. Sheriff, she yelled. That's me. That provoking little twerp, oh, I mean that dear child sweetness done escaped, oh, I mean disappeared. And I'm fit to be tied, worrying about that poor thing, all pink and helpless, wandering lost on the plains and stepping on scorpions and falling into holes and such. You gotta bring her back alive, oh, I mean safe, before she runs into Coyote Pete. That did it. Scorpions were one thing, but Coyote Pete is as mean as an acre of rattlesnakes and the toughest, ugliest desperado in the West. So I got my star and I buckled on my gun belt and headed west. It was hot as blazes. Seemed like the wind was too tired to blow. Then it got hotter. Hours passed, and what with the sun's beating down on me, I commenced to feel thirsty. That was when I realized that it would have been prudent to bring some water. After some more hours, I began to stagger with the thirst, and the next thing I knowed, I was plopped down in the dirt. Fortunately, I was in the shade of a big cactus, so I decided to stay there for a spell to catch my breath. Next thing I knew, I felt this cool, delicious water trickling over my tongue. I popped open my eyes, and there, just a shadow against the sun, was little Sweetness and her big canteen. As soon as I was watered up enough to make words come out of my mouth, I said, why sweetness, thank heaven I've saved you. And she said, yes sir, thank you. That little orphan is just as cute as a speckled pup under a wagon. Now I've come to take you home, says I. I don't wanna go home, says she. I'm tired of scrubbing floors with a toothbrush. What can't be cured must be endured, I told her. Now I thought this was very wise advice, but the orphan didn't seem to think so, 
cause she lit off like she was trying to catch yesterday. This day was going from bad to worse. Now I was gonna have to save that orphan again. Also, if you know anything about the desert, you know that when the sun goes down in all its glory, it starts to cool off and then it gets right cold. Also, the snakes come out. So I headed off after sweetness, all shivering and wishing I'd have brought a blanket. I got to feeling a trifle hungry too. Seems like I was wandering around among the snakes and the rocks for a coon's age till I was so tuckered out, I just curled up against a bush and went to sleep. Pretty soon, I commenced to dream that I was home with my own dear mama, sitting round the fire all toasty warm, and she was cooking something nice. Then I woke up and there was the orphan and a campfire, and that little tyke was a toasted marshmallows. Want one, says she? Well, doesn't that just beat all? Now looky here, sweetness, I says to her while I was gobbling down them marshmallows. This is the second time I done saved you, and I'd very much appreciate it if you'd stay saved. So we're gonna mosey on back to that there orphanage right now. Well, I'll be darned if she didn't start to cry. Don't you like me? She asked. Why, sure I do, honey. And ain't I saved you twice? There's nothing to cry about. But she went right on bawling. I ain't got no ma, says she. I ain't got no pa. All I got is Mrs. Sump and a toothbrush. Well, ain't no way to fix that lesson you gets adopted, I explained. Then she smiled up in my face like she was expecting me to say something particular. It was too deep for me. It sure is a dilemma, was all I could come up with, at which she throwed up her little hands in the air and stomps off into the night. Dang, says I, now you quit that. You really fry my patience. Now I was gonna bring that orphan back no matter what. So there was the sun rising over the plains, and there I was, feeling like something that was chewed up and spit out and trying to fun, find one little orphan out in the big wild west. Now here comes the exciting part. I had gone far enough to work up a good sweat, so I ambled over to a big rock so I could stand in the shade. That's when I heard the sound. Just a little click, like a gun being cocked. I turned around and what did I see but Coyote Pete, loaded for bear and giving me a look that would freeze a cat. I had to think fast. Coyote Pete, I told him, you can see by the star on my chest that I is here to uphold the law. Now you can't go all around shooting folks and scaring orphans, and I's here to arrest you. Now it don't seem like he heard what I said, cause just as cool as you please, he aimed his six shooter right at my big silver star. Oh, what's happening over there? Listen here, hamster brain, I says. You're riding for a fall. You put down that there gun or I'm gonna knock you into the middle of next week. I'm gonna snatch you bald-headed. I'm gonna lock you up and throw away the key. And you know what he done? He made a sound like thunk and fell over backwards, laid out cold like a sack of feed. I scared him that bad. And who should show up just then but sweetness. 
she took off her hair ribbons and we tied that varmint up bulletproof and pig tight. Now, sweetness, I told her, I ain't having no more of this running away. You can't go roaming around this here prairie with outlaws all over the place. It's too dangerous. How many times has I got to save you? If you was as smart as you is brave, you could figure out how to save me for good, she said looking me right in the eye. There we stood, having a kind of staring contest. What you leading up to, says I. Think, says she. So I chewed on it a while longer. Hmm. Do it have something to do with adoption? You're getting it, she says. I was starting to get a kind of pretty picture up in my head regarding me and little sweetness and a couple of rocking chairs by the fire. Well, sweet child, I says to her, I know I's a rough character, but if you was to agree to it, I could adopt you. Pa, says she, and she fell on me like grandma on a chicken snake. Then me and Sweetness rolled that varmint Coyote Pete all the way back to town. Now here comes the ending. That very day I done signed them adoption papers. Then that precious child told me about the seven other orphans and how their toothbrushes was worn down to little nubs with all that scrubbing. So I adopted them too. As for Coyote Pete, we put him in jail, and I got a big reward for bringing that varmint to justice. After a few years, they let him out and put him in the custody of a parole officer. This was none other than Mrs. Sump, who, as you can see, was out of the orphan business. And I don't know how she done it, but she got that desperado to marry her, and now all he does is scrub that floor. And I can tell you, he jumps when she hollers frog. And that's the truth. The end. And that is called saving sweetness. Did that sheriff really save her? Or did sweetness really save the sheriff? You think about that. All right, we're gonna do a little rhyme together. First, we have to learn some new signs. I wanna have, see so you put your thumb out and put that right by up on your head, just like this. And the next two fingers, point them straight up in the air. And now if you bend your fingers like this, that is the American Sign Language sign for horse. Can you try? Thumb, two fingers up, and right up by your head. And then flick them just like this. That's the horse. All right, we're also gonna do horseback riding. So let's take your hand down like this and then open your two fingers up, just like that, awesome. Okay, now hold your other hand out flat. Turn this one upside down. It kind of looks like a person riding on a horse, doesn't it? Here we go, if we go like this, we push our hand out like that, that means horseback riding. So we're gonna ride the horse out of town, just like all the people wish Coyote Point. Coyote Pete would have ridden out of town. Okay, are we ready? Horse and riding, horseback riding. Very good. Okay, here's our rhyme. I had a little pony that trotted up and down. I bridled it and saddled it and trotted out of town. Very good, let's try that one more time together, okay? Here's your horse, remember, horse, and then riding out of town. <gasps> Really good. Okay, here we go. I had a little pony that trotted up and down. I bridled it and saddled it and trotted out of town. Very good, you were really good at that. Well, we have a couple more stories to listen to at the end. I hope you come back after the break and that you come to see us at the San Bruno Public Library. Maybe you'll check out the book that I just read to you or some other books about cowboys and the West. 
Hope to see you at the next section of the show. Bye-bye. <laughs>
And there's the librarian on the bookmobile. That's who they've been waiting for. That's who they're having the party for. And look, all the animals are waiting with their books and their books are in bags and they're holding them. They can't wait to go into the bookmobile and get new books. Well, have you ever seen a bookmobile in person? I have, I've even been on one. Maybe someday if you're lucky, you'll get, be able to get on a bookmobile too. In the meantime though, you can just come visit us at the regular library, right? And there they are inside the bookmobile. She's checking out their books, just like you check out at the San Bruno Public Library. The end. Well, that was a fun version of She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain, wasn't it? I hope sometimes you sing that song at home. All right. Our next story, remember how we said we were gonna have some cowboys in our story time? Look, there's a very tall one and a very short one. This is A Short and Tall Tale by Remy Charlotte. Little Old Big Beard and Big Young Little Beard. Little Beard was called Little Beard because he had a little beard on his face. Big Beard was called Big Beard because he had a big beard on his face. Little Beard was big, much bigger than Big Beard. Big Beard was little, much littler than Little Beard. Little Beard was young, much younger than Big Beard. And Big Beard was old, much older than Little Beard. Old Big Beard was little, and young Little Beard was big. That's so silly. It's true. You can be old and little with a big beard. See all these old and little people with big beards? And it's true, you can be young and big with a little beard. See all these young and big people with little beards? Look at them all. Well, anyway, that's the way it is in this story. In this story, little old big beard and big young little beard were the best of friends. And they were also, guess what, cowboys. And every evening at sunset time, they came up to the top of their favorite hill with their beloved cow, Grace, to eat their favorite meal of, guess what? Beans. Until one night. Whoa, hold on, Big Young Little Beard said. Our cow is gone. Now, as you know, you can't be a cowboy unless you have a cow. She's probably off a grazing, little old Big Beard said. We had better get on our horses and find Grace before the sun goes down, or she'll be lost to us forever. So they got on their horses and rode down and around and around and around until they came to the bottom of their favorite hill. But Grace was nowhere to be found. We'll never find her in the dark, little old Big Beard said. I suggest we rest and continue to look for Grace tomorrow morning. Good idea, Big Young Little Beard said. So they unrolled their sleeping bags onto the ground, crawled into them, and were soon fast asleep in the quiet night. At sunrise the next morning, they got up and had a breakfast of, guess what, beans. And then they went up the next hill in zigs and in zags, deep into the deepest forest to continue their search for grace. They looked and they looked and they looked, but Grace was nowhere to be seen. Little old Big Beard started to cry. Tears came out of his eyes, rolled down his nose, down his beard, and into a little puddle. Big young Little Beard started to cry too. Tears came out of his eyes, rolled down his nose, down his beard, and into a big puddle. Oh my goodness, look at the puddles. They are crying hard. 
Soon they were both standing in a huge puddle of salty tears when suddenly they heard a long, loud moo. I know that sound, Big Young Little Beard said through his tears. That's our lost cow. We have found Grace. Where is she? Hiding in the trees. No, no, little old Big Beard, older and wiser said. I think it would be more honest to say that Grace has found us. And just in time, too. Whoa, look. He was almost going to drown in those tears. He was coming up so high, he was going to come over his head. Oh, my goodness. They found him just in time. Then their beloved cow, Grace, brought little old Big Beard and big young Little Beard down and out of the forest and led them all the way back up to the top of their most favorite hill. Up, 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 up. Back on the top of their favorite hill, they watched the sun go down and had a hearty supper of, guess what? Beans. What an exciting two days, little old Big Beard said. But now let's get some rest and sleep and dream of the next good times we can have together. There's little old Beard and the cow and big young little beard. And they sang, A grazing grace, how sweet you found such wretched souls as we. We cried and cried till we nearly drowned. I'm glad you're close to me. And they all were happy together. The end. That was Little Old Big Beard and Big Young Little Beard, A Short and Tall Tale by Remy Charlotte. What do you think? Do you think they found the cow or do you think the cow found them? I think the cow found them, even though they were looking very hard. Well, that was a very fun book. I liked it a lot. Thank you so much for listening to my stories today. I hope you enjoyed traveling to the West and the Southwest. Maybe you'll come in and check out these books, especially she'll be coming around the mountain because you can see all kinds of animals from the Southwest in that. Maybe there's some animals that you've never seen before in person and you can learn about them in that book. All right, well, I hope to see you soon at the library. Let's sing our goodbye song. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Well, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Well, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Well, it's time to say goodbye. Make a smile and wave goodbye. Well, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Bye-bye. Hope to see you soon. Come by and say hello to me. So sit me down and let the spell begin. I'll find myself in story time again.